Let's take that, take that same circuit and simulate it using our multi-sim simulation. So starting out, we're going to need a couple of voltage sources. A DC power there. We'll need a couple of those. We need the uh, positive 10 volt and we're going to need a negative 15 volt. So I click on those and then hit escape so that it no longer continues to, uh, uh, it'll keep placing sources until you hit escape. Now let's go ahead and change these voltage values while we're at it. Uh, double click on it, it opens it up. Instead of a 12 volt, we want it to be 10 volts. And over here, instead of 12 volts, we want it to be a negative, what was it, negative 15 volts. Alrighty, now we need some resistors. You can get resistors in a number of different places. Right here is a virtual resistor. You can also come up here to the place, do a place, component, and uh, kind of dig your way on down. But it's easiest just to pick up the virtual toolbar here. And we click there, and we need a bunch of resistors. I need that 4K ohm. I need one down here at an 8K. I need a 2K, I need a 12K, I need a 24K, and I think that's all of them. So come back here and change the values, double clicking on it. This one's going to be a 4K, so I enter 4K here. And this one is going to be an 8 kilo ohm resistor, 8K. This one here is going to be a 2 kilo ohm resistor, 2K. This one right here is going to be a 12 kilo ohm resistor. And again, double clicking on this and making that a 24 kilo ohm resistor. Now, this one we need to rotate, so I'm going to select it and then right click on it and rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to do the same thing here. Right click on it, rotate it 90 degrees. And let's see, then we also need a capacitor. Right here is a virtual capacitor. Bring it here, click on it. Again, hit escape to stop placing more capacitors. Right click on it, rotate it, and double click on it, making it a 20 microfarad. So 20 U, just type in the U for microfarad. Multisim doesn't have uh, the Greek letters in here. Okay, now we need a switch. Alrighty, to find switches, let's come over here to the Place, drop-down menu, Components. On the Master Database, and the options you've got on the Master Database are Master Database, Corporate Database, and User Database. So the Master Database is what comes with Multisim. We're going to look in there and we're going to be looking through all groups. You can specify other groups, but the all groups shows you everything that's out there. And let's just scroll on down here to switches. It's in alphabetical order. Switches right there. And then it gives us an option of them, a bunch of dip switches and special pack switches. We're looking for a single pole double throw. Let's go ahead and click on that. We'll put it up here and then you can see what it is. A single pole double throw. Again, hit escape to stop. Single pole double throw has two different positions. So you can switch a single line, either going to this position or, as, the, as it says here, hitting the space bar, switches it to the other position. So let's rotate this. Ni Oops, wrong direction. You may not know it, but I know it. We want to rotate it uh, one more time. There we go. And we're going to place, let's just move this capacitor out of the way and bring the switch up into here. Now we can bring the capacitor on over to here. And let's bring the 8 kilo ohm resistor down here just so that it looks like it's going to be in parallel with the capacitor. And likewise, we'll bring this down here. And our 4 kilo ohm resistor, we'll leave it on up. We'll leave it up here. Now, let's start connecting it. To do that, you know that you just hover your pointer over a terminal until you get the little bullseye or the crosshairs. And then click. 
and click, crosshairs, click again, and it connects you up. Now we're going to bring this, make the connection on over here to there. And let me pause the recording because you can see what I'm doing, but you don't need to watch all this. I'm not going to waste your time. Let me pause the recording and I'll go ahead and get this thing hooked up. Alrighty, we've got the circuit back, or got the circuit put together. And as you can see, I've got the left hand of the circuit with a switch connected there like that. And if I hit the space bar, it connects me up to this half of the circuit. So we're going to be looking at time varying signals now. It doesn't do us any good to look at a time varying signal with a voltmeter. We need an oscilloscope. So I'm going to come on over here. There's a watt meter. There's the oscilloscope. So I click on it and bring it on over here someplace like that. Now, using the oscilloscope, we need a ground. So coming on right over to here on the place source option. Come here. I want a ground. Click on that. OK. And I'm going to put a ground down here, referencing this then, that point as my reference. And I need to also put a ground on my, or reference the uh, oscilloscope to ground. So let me just stop that and get ourselves a little more room here. Move the oscilloscope up a little ways. Now, let's put the ground onto the negative terminal of the A channel of the oscilloscope and the positive terminal of the oscilloscope we're going to bring down here and look at the voltage on this capacitor. Okay. Now that's the, the measuring device but to see the scope screen we need to double click on it and there's our screen. Let's just put it on over here. You'll notice on the 10 milliseconds per division is the time base calibration. The vertical um, voltage per division is currently set at 5 volts per division. Do we have a feel for how long this is going to take us to change? How long of a time period is it going to take this signal or this capacitor to charge and discharge? Well, You'll recall that our tau that we calculated was 0.2 seconds. So when this capacitor is over here, connected to this right-hand side of the circuit, it was moving or changing on the order of 2 tenths of a second. So that means 4 tau would be 8 tenths of a second. Let's just, you know, 10 milliseconds is going to be awfully short. Let's, let's juice this up a little bit. There's 1 tenth of a second. Our total time is going to be eight tenths of a second. Let's uh, let's just try that at a half a second to begin with. And if you recall, we were going from um, about 6.67 volts down to a minus five volts. So five volts per division, eh, you know, that's good enough for now. Let's just uh, go ahead and take a look at that and see what we get, um, and then we can come back and we can adjust it as necessary. All right, we've got the switch over here in the left position, so it's going to be charging to 6.67 volts, and then we're going to let it uh, let it uh, switch to the right-hand position. So let's just go ahead and let this thing go. Come up here and toggle. That's the toggle switch to get the simulation going. And sure enough, it starts up here. Now we're at 5 volts per division. So here's zero. There's five volt, volts. Yeah, that's you know that's conceivable that that's 6.6666 volts there. And in fact, down here on the display, it's telling us that it's up there at 6.67 volts. So let's go ahead and switch it over to the other position and watch it respond. Starts out decaying exponentially. The closer it gets to where it's going, the more. It, oops, darn it. Let's try this again. Let it go on up there. That's about the six volts there. And let it now start to drop down. And as you can see, 
it's approaching that minus 5 volts as the asymptote. And I don't know why it does that, but it cleared itself and it's still continuing to find, to search that 5 volts, and it'll take a long time for it to get there. Okay. Now we can switch it again. This time it's starting at T equal or at uh, V initial, an initial voltage of negative 5 volts. And we switch it. And there's that transition, and it's heading up to the 6 volts. And we can get it up there at the 6 volts, and we can switch it back and forth as much as we want. 